Good morning, hello, all you crazy YouTubers out there. Welcome to the part two of the amazing shelf tour of 2024. Please check out the first part. Uh, it's a little bit of a lengthy video, but the reaction has been fantastic, very complimentary of people, and, uh, you know, uh, had a good time. I believe I'm going to have one more shelf tour after this video, so that's why this is part two. The current shelf you're looking at, the physical shelf itself, I think I've had this 30 years. Um, so it's been moved around. It has been all over Virginia um, as I have moved. And uh, it's finally starting to fall apart just a little bit down here at the bottom here. No big deal. And uh, let's just jump into it. Uh, as I've said before, pretty much probably 99% of everything here was bought secondhand. Antique shops used bookstores such as McKay's outlet stores such as Ollie's outlet and uh, probably 35% off when I order pre-ordered if there's anything in here. Um, very few things. I'd be surprised if there actually is anything here that was full price. Like I said, uh, part of the hobby is, is finding this stuff uh, out in the wild. So let's just jump into it. And uh, as I was saying, this is a slip case. I do love my uh charlie brown and as you can see there's an uh, ollie's outlet sticker on there but if i remember right this is celebrate peanuts this is a slip case where i do believe it is every uh comic strip charles schultz did of just snoopy the ones that had, uh snoopy appear in peanuts by the decades i had two of these books i went ahead and gave them away to someone at work who had an amazing peanuts collection in their office it cracked me up because i died know them for four years and never been in their office and it surprised me so i gave them my two spares because i got the third one but this is peanuts by the decade uh again ollie's outlet fantastic price uh but this is complete editions by decade um oh my goodness what is this 70s 60s in the 50s uh, and that's my favorite era, even though I grew up in the 80s. And in the late 70s, I actually would draw, at four years old, would draw Charlie Brown constantly uh, from anything, coloring books in the Sunday strips. Uh, little Peanuts Treasury. And then we go to Classic Peanuts. This fantastic book. I think this is the late 70s, early 80s. Another one. Classic Peanuts. I love how they make it look like those old college notebooks. I, I don't know why I say old because you can still get them. And then we have the mini faces of Snoopy. Um, for you, uh, for you uh, scholars out there, here's some asterisks. Um, these are actually European editions uh, or English editions. I don't know. From England or something. But I found these at a McKay's. I believe they had the pound price tag had pound on them or something anyway i'm not gonna open them up but i was very happy to get this uh i discovered asterix and obelix and all of this through the disney channel probably in the late 80s because the rich kids were the ones that had the satellite and uh, in could afford the cable that had things like the disney channel back in the day yes it was expensive back then to have that um, Calvin and Hobbes. I'm a big Bill Watterson nut. Uh, um, and one of the things that really attracted the, to tr attracted it to me is how he kept it a comic strip. Didn't exploit it. Um, didn't really commercialize it more than he needed to. Um, which is great when you're young and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, that's a whole other, I'm getting off track here. But, uh, yeah, I would really like to get the complete Calvin and Hobbes at some point. I've just never really gotten around to trying to look for a deal. It would have to be the hardbacks. And then Bloom County, Babylon. Um, like I said, I've collected comics since 1977, read them, uh, had the stepdad uncle's collection, bought my first comic book in around 1979. And, uh, but I've always been a nut those Sundays. I always loved to be at one of the grandparents' house to get the Sunday paper to always read these. Uh, here's the, uh, Gary Larson after he left the far side, he came out with it. There's a hair in my dirt. I absolutely love this hardback. Um, can't believe I found that, uh, so soon after it came out. Farside Galleries. You're going to see the complete Farside here pretty soon. Prehistory of the Farside, the 10th Anniversary Edition uh, exhibit. And I tell you what, I practically studied this when I got this book when it came out. 
fantastic. Um, far side gallery part two. As these were yard sales and uh, believe it or not, uh, I think Goodwills and outlet stores. Uh, Mark going to Barnes and Noble. I think I got that picture of the pre of the far side at a Barnes and Noble. When you walked in, uh, they still had the shelves. Even back then, they had the shelves where you walked in and it was the clearance stuff. These were at all, all these outlets. I believe these are out of print. Mad Archives, Volume 4. I hate that I opened it to actually look at it because I found out these were quite collectible uh, in Volume 2. Oh, there's something in there. Mad About Superheroes, uh, a soft cover. Mad About Superheroes, Bigger, Faster, Dumber, Hardback, Volume 2. I believe that has the Watchmen movie parody. Mad about the movies. Like I said, Mad, I think the best era of Mad, from what I read, and I'm very biased, uh, was the 70s. Um, they actually took on social issues in a very hard-hitting and comedic way at times. You know, the satire was just spot on. Uh, and, you know, the movies, you know, just the art, man, just the art, just... Mark Drucker, is that who it was who did the art for the movies? Uh, a Sealed Archive Volume 1 of Vampirella. Uh, that was from Ollie's. I was so happy to get this pre-ordered. Fantastic Four uh, Marvel Arts by Alex Ross, his vision. He studied Kirby. He kind of made this to where it would fit in, um, fit in between issues, I think, of the Stanley Jack Kirby run. And it was not put... What's funny is that it was put out by Abrams Comic Art instead of Marvel proper. This, I uh, found this on sale or discounted huge, very huge, a uh, huge discount on this on Amazon. But of course, when they sent it, they always, always get damaged books by them and stuff, right? But this is the art of Masters of the Universe. Um, as a kid born at a perfect time, um, he, it was all about He-Man and G.I. Joe in Star Wars. And I cannot believe this was a collectible. I found this at an antique store. Um, and I remember when these were on clearance and they never dropped in price to where I was happy, even on clearance, even though I wanted it. But, uh, this is a fantastic book of the art, uh, in the process of Batman, the animated series. Turns out this thing is worth money now. Um, more Berkeley breathe. This actually has the record in it. A uh, little punk record, punk band, Billy and the Bongers bootleg. Uh, Berkeley Breathe, Penguin Dreams, um, A Wish for Wings That Would Work. also had the DVD of that Christmas special. Uh, this is absolutely hilarious. Um, Outland, when, you know, he went to Outland, but he ended up slowly turning it back to what it originally was. Um, you can see the Goodwill sticker here. Uh, I love this. This was actually, uh, they turned this uh, strip into a um, Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, but this was, uh, Goose and Grimm, uh, yeah, King of the Heap, uh, Mother Goose and Grimm, absolutely love that. Uh, we have more here, um, politically, fashionably, and aerodynamically incorrect. Now, this strip always was a little bit left-leaning, and it was, if you, you know, you could read it on two levels, it was just funny, and then every now and then, Berkeley Breathe would get a little bit political, and Yes, this was during the Reagan era. So he, he was a little bit left. Um, and then uh, what shifted for what was left, uh, Blue go, went way too far. So if you want to go back and see when... This is a good time capsule. That's what I'm trying to get at. Night of the Mary Kay Commandos. Caught myself. And I got uh, two of these. These were... I remember finding these at Hillsville Flea Market. Uh, most of these. Yeah. Outland. As you can see... I just double dipped a little bit there over the years. Oh, what have we got here? More Calvin and Hobbes, classic stuff. And I'm pinned against the shelf of comic books here. So I'm doing my best, guys. More Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes, something under the bed is drooling. Uh, that that title is just so great. Then we get into some Far Side. Oh, man, I was a far side nut. This is the strip that I would cut out the uh, one panel uh, strips out of the paper. Um, I, my God, I had tons of them. Yeah, Cows of Our Planet. It came from the far side. More Calvin and Hobbes. There's uh, treasure everywhere. And then we get into Homicidal Jungle Cat. 
and Sin City uh, books. These were uh, Barnes & Noble on sale. I'm not sure. I think the Spirit was, right? But it's the making of the movie. These are oddly shaped in the making, the visual companion for the Spirit movie that I use for ASMR. And then we can come down here. Let me get this. We should have better photography here. <laughs> better video recordability. Okay, I remember finding this in Galax, Virginia, and a little store they had there. Uh, this was on sale, but this is Masterpiece Comics. Um, as you can see, this is an this covers a little bit of an O to you know giant size X-Men number one. But this is hilarious because they take uh comic strips in um superhero ideas and they turn them into like from that era master like uh the great renaissance uh painters and philosophers and stuff uh got a hold of them uh this is something this is one of the few works uh that it, i've had a really hard time getting through the third book it's a slipcase edition of lost girls um uh oh of lost girls um and this is where we're having light issues An officially a howler mouse moment here we had technical difficulties right but this is where he decided to uh he's seen alan moore and melinda gibby spent a lot of time making the story of uh you know pre-world war one uh coming of age story if you will with uh, alice from alice in wonderland dorothy from wizard of oz and uh wendy from uh peter pan and they decided to explore adult content because uh, it seems like comics had been influenced or they've had uh, through that, you know, through every other genre in the world. But we didn't have that one. Um, and I'm just sitting here thinking, well, you know, you never went to a head shop in America, huh, Alan? But it's been very hard to get through, man. Um, wow. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, some seedy stuff. This was a fantastic uh, Christmas and or birthday present i believe for my wife i can't remember which which one it was but this is for my wife i am a team venture nut uh the venture brothers show is just it's a work of art i absolutely love it beast of burden if you haven't uh, read this book uh this is just fantastic highly recommend as you can see i have a little uh, I'm glad I make these videos because uh, I know I found this like in a box somewhere, probably for like a buck or something. But this is all three issues of Neil Gaiman and Mike Zuli, uh, The Last Temptation, Alice Cooper book. Uh, one of my journals. Have I wrote anything? Have I started this one? I journal every now and then. Sometimes I'll go to the back and, you know, I like this. You know, I'll say it's poetry, but it's really uh, song lyrics uh, every now and then. Okay, we get into the tardy stuff. I uh, jumped on Amazon to find this stuff when I found out uh, what company did this. I found out that I think it's Fantagraphics was putting some of these out in English. I am a huge tardy nut, man. Oh my God, such good stuff. Uh, Fog over uh, Tolbiac Bridge. Love this. Streets of Paris. Uh, this was interesting. The um, Arctic Marauder. I think this is a story from the 70s they brought over here. And then uh, the true story, the unknown soldier, uh, great stuff. That one's very surreal. Uh, Sandman, King of Dreams. I highly recommend. I remember buying this. It's damaged. I found this for like three bucks in a mall down in Winston Salem, North Carolina, a store that was going out of business. Um, probably got this for like three bucks or anything, but I think it's written by an assistant editor that worked on the series as Neil Gaiman was putting it out. And it's just a great overview of the entire series for beginners there. Uh, Mike McNola working my way through this, uh, library edition, the last one. Well, it was when this came out. Um, I think they've started telling flashback stories of Hellboy, but Hellboy in Hell, uh, as you can see, there's my bookmark. Haven't opened this one because I've read the story a dozen times. This was another gift for my wife one year for a birthday or a um, birthday present. Okay, The Strange Death of uh, Alex Raymond by Dave Sim. Uh, I could talk about this all day long, but the artwork is absolutely beautiful. Uh, that is, this was replaced. Uh, it's the same book, but I kept, kept the receipt. That was replaced by my company that I order books online because um, apparently... 
there was a printing area in that. So that's a bit of a collectible due to having a printing area. And they weren't supposed to ship it out to me. And instead, I offered to send it back to them. They just sent me a free copy that was corrected. 35 years that Barry Windsor Smith uh, worked on this book. This was originally a rejected Hulk story. This will tear your heart out. This will break your heart. It's a masterpiece. 35 years in the making. Uh, from 1994, I remember the comic book shop, Moonlight, was going out of business. And I found this uh, on sale for practically nothing. That's the original bag it was in. But this ended up being the hard goodbye. This was the first story that was in... Uh, uh, they, you know, they introduced us to Sin City and Marv back in 91, I believe. So this is the hardback that came out of that. That's very collectible, or it was at one point. Uh, we have, as you can see, these are Ollie's. We have uh, the black and white editions. What are these, Noir? Yeah, the Batman Noir of The Dark Knight Strikes Again. And The Long Halloween. I actually prefer it in black and white. Um, this is a Jack Kirby estate. Uh, I can't remember where I got this from, but it's sort of like a fanzine. You ordered it. They sent out a care pack. This is supposedly signed by Jack Kirby, which I don't know if I believe. Uh, 58 of 500. And there's all kinds of like unreleased art from the Kirby estate in this and magnets and stuff like that. A slip case of Batman the uh, Master Race. Uh, I ordered these 35% off uh, by pre-ordering every month. Got the hardback editions of the, you know of this. And then with the last issue, they went ahead and sent me the slipcase for free. Uh, Batman, the official movie book. These uh, are absolute editions. Oh, wait. Yeah, absolute, sort of absolute editions. So here is Green Arrow Archer's Quest, the deluxe edition. This is where Brad Meltzer followed up Kevin Smith, wrote a fantastic story. And then this is the Absolute Edition. This should be the Kevin Smith stuff. Uh, this was at Ollie's for a steal. Um, a $100 book for $15. So, of course, I had to get that. But this is the Kevin Smith Absolute Edition um, books where they brought him back to life. It's a great story. And then we have uh, my one of my favorite Jeff. My this is from the Superman Batman run. This is Absolute Powers, I believe what it was called. Uh, absolutely my favorite issue uh, com story out of that Superman Batman run by Jeff Loeb, and I think it just continues on. Yeah, fourteen to twenty six Absolute Edition. I have this in soft cover. I have the original stories, uh, the original issues. Absolutely loved it. Uh, this should be the Frank Quietly art book, the complete art of uh, the DC Comics art of Frank Quietly, the DC Comics works of Brian Bolin. Love that book. Uh, the mythology of, uh, again, I bought this the same time that store in Winston-Salem was going out of business around the same time that I bought that uh, Sandman book. But this was a big deal. This was mythology. This was the artwork of Alex Ross. And then years later, I found Marvel Ossity on sale at a Barnes & Noble. Uh, his, they did the same thing with Marvel years later. Uh, what is this? The covers of Fables. The comics companion to the Star Wars. This is the timeline in the books of Dark Horse. Uh, how they all, the continuity in between them and all sorts of great things. That is just a fun read. Found these at Free Comic Book Day in Princeton at a comic book shop that's no longer there. I cannot believe they were selling these so cheap. But these are um, the originals, you know, reprinted stories. Grant Morrison, some other people here. Of uh, which doctor is that? The eighth doctor. Uh, the guy that got the raw deal. You can see John Ridgway, Grant Morrison's in there, Jamie Delano. Oh, what is that? Is that the fourth, fifth, sixth doctor? Sixth doctor. Oh, some just some Doctor Who novels, or magazines, and my visual dictionary before it went all to shit. I'm so glad I have that stuff. Then we come down here and we plug back the light. Very cramped quarters, guys. Very cramped quarters. There we go. And this is the slipcase. Believe it or not, my first wife bought me this for Christmas. I think she found it at a Sam's Club on sale, but this is the complete far side slipcase. And this would be fun to shoot a video all on its own, but this is Marvel Treasury Editions. When I was a kid, this Fantastic Four one, uh, it's not the original. I have bits and pieces of these just beat up. Uh, these were the things that I read and studied. It's just fantastic. 
fantastic stuff. Superman and Batman, uh, Superman and Batman, Superman and Spider-Man. Uh, oh my God, I remember when we had that in the house. We read that until the cover started disintegrating off of it. Big Guy and Rescue the Robot. There should be two parts in here. Uh, Superman Shazam. Uh, Wings by Paul McCartney. Nah, just joking. Big Guy Rescue the Robot. Band on the run over there. Shazam. More Shazam. G.I. Joe. Barry Windsor Smith. This is from the 90s promotional material we had a bunch of these first editions i hope i have these uh actually reprinted action comics one of those because that is where i learned about uh, superman's origin this is also where uh you know conan was just huge in the house constantly i don't remember conan never not being in the house first editions first editions close encounters i love having kirby work that's big Oh, man. I love getting these out and going through them every now and then. Uh, Defenders. Giant superhero team-up. Doctor Strange. A lot of great Frank Bruner stuff in that one. Oh, okay. So, I have the Close Encounters adaption, not by Kirby. Uh, this is what I was thinking of. Uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey by Kirby. Uh, some more Mighty Thor. A Legion. I never find these in really good shape, so that's my reader's copy. That thing is beat up. And of course, I have another one. I need to take out that. I take out the. I think I left that out because the one that's beat up will fall apart. Here's the wedding of uh, two Legion characters. We'll just leave it at that. Um, I grew up during the hair bands. Here is the Metallica tour book you could have bought. Full of like. Uh, this is during the Black Tour. I probably got this in 1990, probably. I don't know. I've seen Metallica several times. I haven't been back since about 2000. Whatever St. Anger came out. Motley Crue. I absolutely hate this band. <laughs> and uh, I think I bought a t-shirt in this because what would happen is, is during the Dr. Feelgood tour, they kept coming around Johnson City, which was the nearest place you could see, uh, have a venue back then in 89 slash 90. Um, so people, uh, specifically my stepdad's friends, they knew I loved music. I was playing bass. I was playing around and all this stuff. And they kept getting me Motley Crue tickets for my birthday. So I hate saying how much I hate Motley Crue, but because the intentions were good. Oh, I have stories from those concerts. Yeah, more Barry Windsor Smith stuff from his storytellers. More Legion stuff. Oh my goodness, more spectacular Spider-Man stuff. Oh, so many of these. Oh, this is probably Dan Jurgens doing Fantastic Four, Superman, Batman. If you watch my videos, you've seen me pick up a lot of this stuff. Heaven's Ladder with Brian Hitch. The artwork is great, but I absolutely could not stand this story. I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, Star Wars. Oh, I hope I didn't damage that. But anyway, this is the re-released uh, Batman uh, Treasury Edition from the 70s. I think that's what that was, or the original one. Jim Steranko's uh, History of Comics Part 2. Great reads. Okay, here's the facsimile edition that came out with the gloss cover. What else do we have here? Star Wars. There should be, yeah, it's another Star Wars. Batman Strangest Cases. I absolutely love this. I absolutely love this. I mean, I know it's a bunch of reprints. Um, volume 4. I've had this forever. Uh, a lot of the original strips are in this. Very Frozen Horrors. Volume 4. Oh, I forgot about having this. Penguin Comics. The Book of Comics. This was... Uh, oh, I think this is from the late 70s or something. I'm not sure. And then these are things I could probably give up. Uh, I'm not going to be sure what's in here, man. But Creative Marvel Space Faring Superheroes, The Complete Comic History. This is because Guardians of the Galaxy, the movie, was hitting big. I forgot about this. Drawing the Mark with a Mouth. Three decades of amazing Marvel work of Deadpool. I could probably get rid of those. I've had this at least since the 90s. And it is upside down. But it's a Rolling Stones, you know, art book, photograph books. My David Bowie uh, photographs uh, over the years, especially when he was in Berlin. Oh, the Silver Age of DC Comics, some reference material. It's fun stuff. 
Superman, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, the icon. I remember buying this when the first Spider-Man movie came out back in 2022. And then we have, um, man, I got to go to Baltimore Con twice. Uh, thank you, Charlton66, for being a fantastic host. And then he would send me some of these. And when you go to Baltimore Con, um, like this is 2017, they do a theme. And a lot of the artists there will donate their work for this book and they sell it, right? So here's the one for Telos. Whoa. This is the one for Black Sad. That's why I couldn't do them. Strangers in Paradise. Um, I just love that one. Mouse Guard, I do believe. This is from 2015. I believe that was a gift by Steve. And Archie. A bunch of stuff in Archie. And that's got some artwork that you just won't find anywhere else. It's fantastic stuff. Then, as we get in here, let me fix this. Yeah, Telos. And then we have the slipcase. I found this at Heroes Con, I think, last year. Uh, you had to pre-order this. This has all sorts of people taking the... It's the anniversary of uh, Among the Living. And they took each song title and they... Somebody wrote a comic book story and drew it and stuff. And I really need to go ahead and read that because I read it online and looked at everybody's reviews. Tons of Watchmen stuff. The Film Companion. Let's get that around here. The Art of the Film. Wizard Magazines. Wizard Magazines. Before Watchmen, I have my original trade that I traded in a freaking parking lot upstairs. Um, you know, this is uh, all sorts of, uh, I love this book, The Watchmen Com Companion. This reprints uh, their first appearance in a DC Spotlight issue. This has the stuff that they did for the role-playing game. Watching the Watchmen by, you know, a lot of Dave Gibbons' preliminary art. Portraits, they had a photographer on the set of uh, Watchmen. And he just took uh, portraits of uh, everybody that was on there. My absolute watchman that my friends bought when I was moving to Roanoke. And then the art of Robert Crumb. And just because I'm seeing this over here, I need to hang this up. Five Ghosts. Uh, and one of my friends made that for me. That is her pencil work of Howler Mouse. And I'm going to go ahead and flip it around here. And you can see that I have finally gotten around to hanging stuff on the wall. If you've seen me on uh, Instagram, then you've seen all that. So thanks for checking in, guys. We came in under 30 minutes. There's probably going to be one more in a few weeks, and that's going to be full of a few EC comics and actual Elric novels and fantasy books and sci-fi books. Um, proper, you know, proper binding. Uh, no pictures in some of those and lots of words on every page. It's amazing. Like, subscribe, sub, and uh, thanks for checking it out. Later.